Ryan Lochte joins us now from Gainesville, Florida. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Listen, I only spot it because I have my own. Is that a little gray hair on the side there? Oh, that's not a little, that's a lot. <laughs> Man, I gotta tell you, Ryan Lochte with a little gray hair, wiser, older, stronger. How do you describe it? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm stronger. I got that old man and dad strength in me now, so. <laughs> <laughs> you got that in you now. You know, I got to tell you, um, I know you're in the middle of training. You have yeah. uh, the trials coming up. Well, that's June 8th. How does it feel to be back in the pool? You know, I try not to think about the headlines being the oldest male swimmer. Um, you know, I kind of take each day at a time and just worry about what I have to do to accomplish my goals in the sport of swimming. Um, and that's kind of basically what I'm doing right now, taking day by day, step by step, um, and just, you know, uh, everything that I've been doing leading up to this point has been on point. So I'm feeling good. You're feeling good, you know, to, to get to where you want to be. Obviously, we know you are willing and open to look at the past um, through the lens of learning. How much is the pressure of the past weighing on you right now, Ryan? The past is the past. Uh, you can't change the past, but you can change the future. Um, and that's basically what I'm doing. Um, you know, it was, everything happens for a reason in life. And, you know, I had to get knocked down really low in order to find basically who I really am. Wow. Um, and I found that. Um, I mean, I have a beautiful wife, a beautiful family, and this is my calling, being a dad. Like, swimming is just a sport that I love to do, but I was put on this earth to be a dad and a husband, so I'm loving life. That is, I mean, and we're going to meet your beautiful wife, and you've given us some exclusive glimpses inside your role as a dad. It's interesting that you've gone to the point of your role is to be a husband and dad, but for so long, you were trained to swim. You were trained to be a winner. And then life convinced you that you were supposed to also be the cool guy in the room, including in that reality show from 2013. Who was that guy then? And when I was at NBC covering the Olympics, you know, everyone was, you know, talking about the coolest kid in the room and they thought it was you, but you didn't always feel that way. Um, you know, I had a persona of people knowing like, oh my God, there's Ryan Locke. He's the rock star, the playboy image of swimming. And, you know, I played that role. But deep down inside, I knew that wasn't me. Like, that was not me at all. And, you know, throughout those hard times that I've had in my life, the people that got me out of those dark holes was my family, mm -hmm. was my family and my close friends, because they know who really I am, like deep down inside, not the persona of being a rock star, the playboy, the catchphrases of Gia, um, <laughs> all that stuff. That wasn't me. That was uh, me trying to play a role. How did he get formed, though? How did that guy get formed? Was it, you know, the success in swimming? Um, obviously, you're a handsome guy. Everybody had you on People magazines, most hands, all these things. But how did that guy, that that guy that you were not, become form? It formed from all the all the fame, all the money that was coming into my life. Like it just came so fast at me that I was like, oh, I got to play this role now. Like people want to see me wearing crazy shoes, wearing grills on the podium. <laughs> Um, having catchphrases, having my own TV show, like going out partying. Um, that was this role that, I mean, I was put into and I just played it. And when you got to that infamous incident in Rio, mm -hmm. where the story was made up and all of the shame that came along with it, who was that guy? Who, what part of your journey led you to that decision? You know, the end of a rock star era, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it was just living in that fast lane for so long. Um, I thought I was invincible. Um, I was untouchable. Like anything I could do, nothing would have happened. Um, but that's definitely not the case. And it was a, a huge, huge wake up call. And I'm so happy that it happened. Because you are. are you, I know a lot of people say that. And, you know, I talk to a lot of people who've had, mm -hmm. you know, these moments where you want the comeback, where you've made awful decisions, bad decisions, and they say they're happy that it happened. Yeah. 
all of that pain, you lost millions of dollars, somewhere around 10 million. Yeah. You're happy it happened. I'm happy it happened because if that those incidents didn't happen, I don't know if I'll be sitting here talking to you right now. Yeah. I don't know where I would be. I know my life was headed in a wrong path. And it was going to lead me to something where I would have regretted. I might have not even be here right now talking to you. Um, I could have been driving drunk and getting in a car accident, killing someone else, killing myself, my family. So I can't. Um, so those incidents happen. Um, and I'm happy it did because the person you see right now, I am the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. Um, I have the best family in the world. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm happy. When we come back, part of the puzzle that's led Ryan to this happy place he's in. Ryan's wife, Kayla, joins us to talk about navigating from the fallout and his quest for the comeback after the break. The 25-year-old version of Ryan Lochte would not believe the 35-year-old Ryan Lochte as I am today. Would not believe it at all. He'd be like, I do not want that lifestyle. Welcome back. We're talking to 12-time Olympic medal swimmer Ryan Lochte. He's training for the Tokyo Games this summer, and if he makes it, he will be one of the biggest comeback stories in sports. And Ryan was banned from the pool after lying about an incident during Rio Games in 2016. Just late months later, in the midst of the fallout, he got engaged to his now wife, Kayla. And she joins us now. Kayla, thank you so much for joining. I got to tell you, that first block of conversation with Ryan, I was not expecting such a vulnerable person because for years... I saw the athlete Ryan Lochte. You saw the man, and you met him right around the time that this scandal happened. People will want to know, why didn't you bail? You'd just gotten involved with him. <laughs> You'd just gotten involved with him, and the golden boy was going through a heck of a time. Yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the easy way out would be to leave, obviously. Um, but I think I was in love and I also got to know Ryan very intimately very early on. So I felt like, um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I was just like, I have to let the world see this man for who I think he is. Um, and yeah, a lot of people told me like, you need to leave him. It's going to ruin, you know, your career and, you know, think it's your future in general and like, you know, kind of let him fizzle his way out type thing. But I was just like, that's just not who I am. And um, yeah, I, I believed in him and who he is as a person. Kayla, how did you help him write his course? I mean, did you guys go to therapy together? Was it, uh oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she basically knocked some sense into me. So, you gave, so that's what I was getting to. Was there some tough love, um, so to speak, oh, yeah. where you had to say, listen, I know other women might have consoled you and others might, you know, coddle you, but I'm not here for that kind of love. Mm -hmm. Totally, entirely. Um, I'm a very tough love person. I'm not a warm, loving, I am warm and loving, but yeah. I'm not like, <laughs> I'm very brutally honest. So, and so I'm, what did you and tell I'm, him in your most brutally honest moment when he was trying to reset? What did you tell him? Oh gosh. Get your shit straight. I mean, so many things. Like, you okay. know, like, that, that probably hurt his feelings. I mean, I can't think of exactly or pinpoint what I've said because it's just, you know, it, 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 took, it took years. It was a journey. It was like me, like, constantly having to be, like, calling him out or making sure, you know, he, he was being accountable for, like, the certain things or making him realize that, you know, every time something bad happened, there was a correlation with him being under the influence. So it was like, you need to look in the mirror. Like I cannot fix you. You need to be able to mm -hmm. fix yourself. I can be here to support you and help you along the way. But if you're not going to fix yourself, no one's going to do it for you. And I'm not going to stay here 
um, while you are self-sabotaging yourself. You know what I mean? Ryan, hearing that from someone that you were finally in love with, this this love of your life come into your world, and now she's giving you, you know, the straight talk in a way perhaps others hadn't. How did that feel? Um, I was surprised at first just because, you know, I didn't hear that honesty like that. Um, and she put it in perspective and then she made me realize that I needed her to wake up and smell the roses. Um, that, yeah, I needed to just wake up and I needed to get a hold of my life yeah. and I needed to change. Um, do you visualize yourself on that podium and those adorable kids looking at you and Kayla looking on and this being the new entry on your Wikipedia page versus what happened the last games? Um, you know, as, as days go on and we get closer to Olympic trials, um, I do um, a little self-meditate uh, right before I go to bed. I kind of picture, I basically go through the, all the steps of every scenario possible of me being late to the swim blocks or me missing my event or me actually breaking a world record. Um, just every scenario that is going through my head, I'm going through it right now. Um, so that way, when I get to the swim meet, I've already visualized every possible scenario. And all I got to do is go out there, have fun, and just race. What scenario do you see playing out? Which is the, what's the pick here? Um, definitely making the Olympic team. Um, that's the one that I visualize a lot, uh, making the Olympic team and, you know, not just making the Olympic team, but going to the Olympics and getting on that podium one more time. And Kayla, how will you feel seeing him if this part of his story, this comeback happens? I've been picturing the moment for years, to be honest, like ever since happened i think that was the one thing that honestly kept me afloat all these years is just picturing that moment of him stepping on the podium and i picture it all the time and i get goosebumps but it's like him just you know having that medal and just i think i'm just gonna cry an ugly the ugliest cry i've ever cried in my <laughs> life um and just i don't know to have my kids like even though covid has you know postponed it another year i've been like still so grateful because at least my kids have now they're a year older and so i'm like well now they're even going to understand what's happening even that much more and so looking at the bright side i just am just oh gosh i it's going to be the best one of the best moments of our lives honestly